What is the AEW storyline with Brian Danielson? Is there an end date that we're supposed to know about? Is he just, if he wins a title in storyline, is he just going to defend it until he loses it and then get his next surgery? Has he scheduled his next surgery for November? So if he wins a title, he has to vacate it on the last day of October because he's got, like, we don't know any of this. It's a complete mystery. And it would help if all of this was explained. I'm just watching it, and I'm watching it, I'm watching it, and I'm still watching it. And it suddenly occurred to me, this is the main event. Yeah. This is the main event of the television show. Soraya and Nyla Rose. Why? They beat the snot out of each other. It was brutal. You know, there were two... <laughs> is a plane landing at your house, or what's going on over there? <laughs> uh, I had the window open because it's hot. I see. It's cars. And uh, props to the ladies here. They they really gave up the body for this. And it was very good. Go out of your way to see this. This was straight out of WWF Challenge in 1986. I mean, if you know what it was supposed to be, it was absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yep. I don't know what a normal person watching the show would have thought of this, but I loved it. Swerve versus the mystery opponent. The mystery opponent ended up being Tomohiro Ishii. They only had a good match. Yep. It was like, if they wrestled a thousand times, 999 of those matches would be better than this one. If this would have aired on WWE television, people would have said this was the worst segment of the year. And it airs here on Collision, and I mean, God, are, are, are we being unbiased here or what? This was an absolute, horrible, preposterous, atrocious segment. I can't even believe it made air. <laughs> But it did. I will say I did laugh when MXM left on the little secret elevator. <laughs> it caught me off guard because of how stupid it was. What is the AEW storyline with Brian Danielson? Is there an end date that we're supposed to know about? Is he just if he wins a title in storyline, is he just going to defend it until he loses it and then get his next surgery? Has he scheduled his next surgery for November? So if he wins a title, he has to vacate it on the last day of October because he's got like we don't know any of this. It's a complete mystery. And it would help if all of this was explained. Have I, have I lost internet here? Uh-oh. Is my internet down? My internet died. Yeah. All right. Stand by, everybody. Hi, everybody. We're back. And uh, we're just going to barrel on through. Right, Vinny? What do we, what do we have on that uh, Facebook thing? Now it says no audio. Jared, do we have audio? I can hear you. <laughs> Honestly, what what is going on? For those of you of a skeptical nature, God, what is one after dark style mystery you would admit might be possible? I got one for you right now. Right now, karma. I was leaning toward contrails. Yes, karma. <laughs> Granny, do you understand the question? Me? Yes. What question? You yeah. don't believe in Bigfoot. You don't believe in UFOs. You don't believe in ghosts. You don't believe in any of this, okay? But what is, is there one thing that maybe you think could be possible? Yeah, animals could be aliens. Just the pets. Just the pets. All right. <clears throat> Actually, my cat, that would explain a lot if my cat was an alien. I can totally understand that. Yeah, we just watched a movie what about this. What is up with my yeah. internet? Lost everybody again. Oh, shit. Or at least Craig. You there, Granny? God damn it. Curry says no problems with the Big Vinny V show. His words. Not since the first one. I was going to say, the very there first one. Was a many disaster. problems. Many, yes. many problems. We've had quite a few. Yeah, and you know what I do? I just barrel on through. Brian. Barrel on through should be the name of this show. They ask him the question, so he starts taking off his jacket and he does the, like he's going to punch him, like we see in the in intro to this, this, uh, this very show. Tell them that they're paid by a car. Ricky Steamboat gets hacha right in the neck. Oh my god. And he goes and then he starts going. He did the fucking most ridiculous it selling was... over and over and over again. I would do my impression, but I don't want to end up on editor Sean's uh, yeah. clip of the week. <laughs> yeah. Uh so quick question. You watch episode seven. It's playing. You texted me episode eight. Oh shit. All right. Well don't look at me, brother. I fucked up. What a, what a show. Put well, this one you know, in the you know what? Barrel on through. Barrel on through. What the hell's going on this week? Like, every single show, something goes terribly wrong. Today, I didn't have the music set to go at first. Then I got it set to go, but I forgot to hit record. <laughs> Finally, I hit record and got the song going right. Golly. 
thought the match was all right. It had a lot of heat early, not a lot of heat during the uh, heat. It was a good TV opener, but that's all. Brit's music hits, getting as big a pop as anything in the match. Yeah. <laughs> So whatever whatever people thought was going to happen with the fans after all of the stories came out about Brit and MJF and everything else, no. these fans either didn't know or they didn't care. Right. They went nuts for her. Jay Lethal opens, opens the official match after the bell rings with five straight topes and then gets practically zero offense the rest of the way in. Remember when they had that CM Punk hangman deal and, and CM Punk was complaining that hangman hit him and he was like thinking he was shooting on him or something? I've heard this for years and years and years. Everybody loves hanger. Man, he will waffle you, mm -hmm. and he doesn't mean to. That's just how he works. And I love the guy and all, but man, he killed Jay Lethal. And he's got to figure this out because that's just not right. I felt so bad for Jay Lethal when this was over. Yeah. Twice he almost got killed by Hangman. We get a pack promo. He's pissed, as usual. I was like really excited when Jungle Boy won that title because I was like, okay, let's do something with Jungle Boy now. Mm -hmm. And he's another guy that's just, he just vanished. He took the belt and went home. He's <laughs> never around. Renee then interviews Mina Shirakawa, who as soon as he appears, by the way, huge pop. Crowd oh, loves yeah. Mina, yeah. Can we sign this woman immediately? Yeah. Good luck, bitch. He walks out. She's got the biggest baby face pop of the whole interview. He is the worst heel in all of wrestling. Uh, that's entirely possible. There is no heel in wrestling <laughs> that is more universally loved and not hated by a single solitary human that's probably... than Okada. I have no idea why they didn't bring him in as a baby face. So he brings out Hook for an interview. Did Hook have an eye bandage last week? I don't remember. I don't, I don't, I don't remember so. him having one, but now his eye is all bandaged up. His eye is bandaged. He's... And Tony's first question is, how's your eye? Yeah, yeah. There's a pause, and then Hook goes... I can't see out of it. And literally everyone in the crowd laughed mm. at this line. Yeah. Nick grabs a sign, says dung bucks and tears it up. I'm not proud of this, but I did laugh. I did laugh. <laughs> then we have the Brian Danielson video package. It's so simple and it's so great. It's title versus career. They set this to time of your life by Green Day, which is a goodbye song after all. But I will say that in general, this show did by far the best job yet. Oh, yeah. Of building up Brian Danielson versus Swerve Strickland. And this is a very non-Dynamite segment because they did not have a banger. He says, Swerve is our world champion. He is much higher on the totem pole than Wheeler Yuta. Swerve is main eventing a giant stadium show in 10 days. Swerve's going to beat his ass. And Swerve beat his ass. He's gone full-on heel. Oh, yeah. and uh, Which is fine because Brian's full-on babyface. But goddamn, we spent a lot of time with him as a heel when people wanted to cheer him. Only to turn him babyface for six weeks. And then turn him right back again. What can you do? Everything with him peaked at the freeway with Hangman and Joe. And he should have won the title there and never looked back. And he didn't win the title there. Then he won it a month later. And it felt like, uh, you know, anticlimactic. And, uh, you know, it's been, it's been fine since then. It has not been great. We got a Trick Williams promo. This promo was awesome. He was jumped at age 18. Got beat up by three dudes in the football team with Chuck Rocks in his car. He figured it out. By the end of the year, they'd all taken L's. That's right. And Dave thought this meant like on the football field. I don't know, man. Could be both. It's, maybe it was Mike. In the parking lot. That. And I, I think he. I think he figured it out. Carmen Petrovich says the following words, which I swear to the Lord above, I am not making up. Time for that shing shing action. <laughs> because you see, she has a sword, a sword. Yes. And she swings it, and they put in sound effects in her music mm. that goes shing shing. Wesley came out for his promo. I'll be fair, this is much better than his crying promos. Because he wasn't sad, he was mad. He was pissed off. Different. Chip on his shoulder, a lot to get off his chest. Not as good as happy Wesley, but better than sad Wesley. I was watching this show late Wednesday night and trying to fight through it, and I was not going to make it. I knew I was going to have to finish it uh, Thursday morning. Oba Femi is wrestling Otis. Oh, yes. I, I have on one more match in me. So what I liked about this match is it was two big meaty men banging meat or whatever they say. And God, this guy, Oba Femi. I mean, he's still got a ways to go. Sure. But he's big and he's got charisma and his offense looks good and he can fucking sell. And uh, I will. I would not say this match was pretty. It no. was not a pretty match at all. <laughs> That's for sure. It was an ugly, ugly awesomely ugly match i loved it i've been watching otis and he's both vader and also super porky yeah i can totally see that it's fucking amazing 
I hated this match. It was horrible. This they had a horrible, horrible match. It was so bad. It, it's everything I hate about NXT. Two people, totally green, choreographed match. His body's flying everywhere. Oh, they love this Chase U. They love Chase U. This was a good match, like three and a half star match. But man, this is a six star crowd pop. They went ballistic. They were out of their minds. And the confetti's firing off and everyone's going crazy. I thought this match was was great. I thought it was a great finish. I thought it was a great moment. Mostly good NXT show. is up and down, dude. NXT is one of those shows where you got to accept you're going to have horrible matches with green people. If you can do that, you can enjoy the show. If you can't, you ain't going to like NXT.